Guard Robotics team number 7013, and we just wanted to give teams a little introduction into PTC Creo and why it's useful in FTC. So let's get started. So why do we love PTC Creo? Well, first of all, you have to consider that it's an industrial grade design software, which means it's used by professionals and companies worldwide. Uh, also, there's a lot of concept design and analysis that you can do in PTC, which is very helpful when it comes to robotics. And one of the great benefits of Creo over other CAD softwares is that they come, uh, it comes with a complete Tetrix kit of parts. So this saves you a lot of time. Basically, every single part in the Tetrix kit is pre-modeled for you to use uh, in your assemblies. And you can also find the entire competition field and all its elements modeled for you. Uh, and you can download that online as well. It also greatly improves how your engineering notebook, look, notebook looks. And it gives the judges a lot more depth into your design process and your concept design. And it provides some great visuals. So if you take some screenshots and drawings that you did in PTC, uh, it's really great and it pops out. And when the uh, judges are flipping through your notebook, those kind of things will stand out. You can also use the models uh, and make them into animations that are kind of flashy and show off your model during judging. So they provide really great visuals in judging sessions as well. And also, there's some really great FTC grants that PTC provides for teams. So we've been applying for these for the past couple of years. And if you haven't looked into that or heard about that yet, you should definitely consider applying for those. So to get started with using PTC Creo, you're going to have to go to this website first, ptc.com slash go slash first. So on the left here, you can see a couple of options of software to download from PTC. And if you scroll down on that same page, you can see some of the resources that this website provides you with to get started with PTC. So over here, you can see the training files and the pictures on the left, and these are taken on the right, sorry, and these are taken from how to model almost anything. So if you go through these tutorials, it'll give you a really great understanding of the software and you know how to use it. And if you also go through the how to develop a product training, uh, you know these two combined will basically prep you for any work that you need to do in FTC when it comes to CAD and PTC. So to get started with using PTC, you really need a nice three button mouse. On the middle, you're gonna need a middle mouse button that not only scrolls, but also acts as a button. So you have to be able to click it and hold it down because you're gonna need that functionality a lot when you interact with the software. And if you don't have it, it's gonna be really frustrating to use the software. So as you can see, when you download Creo uh, off of the website, there's a lot of software that you get. So there's parametric, uh, simulate, direct, layout, but the one you're gonna be using for all your modeling in FTC is PTC Creo Parametric. So you wanna start by clicking on Parametric uh, and using that for all your modeling. So once you do those trainings, which are how to model almost anything and how to develop a product, what you're gonna start off by assembling are uh, parts, assemblies, and drawings. So these are the basically the three basic type of files in PTC. So on the top left, you can see that ball, which is basically an example of a part. So, you know, anything like a channel, a nut or a bolt that you might see on a robot would be a part. On the right, you can see an assembly, which is basically a culmination of parts uh, that interact with each other. So your whole robot, for example, would be an assembly with several sub assemblies. And then on the bottom there, you can see a drawing, which basically just gives a more specific look into, you know, one feature of your robot. And it gives a kind of a different perspective on the information and dimensions and features of the part. So now we're going to jump into some training files from the trainings that we mentioned earlier to kind of give you a look at PTC and a introduction into the software. So as you can see here, this is a model of a bike. And you're basically navigating around this model by holding down the middle mouse button and moving your mouse around. So you can move it around its center of rotation. And not only that, but we're gonna give you an example of how the parts interact. So this assembly has been set up in a way so that when you drag those pedals around, the wheels also move in relation to the pedals. So we're gonna talk about those kind of relationships a little later in the slideshow, but this is basically just an example of how you can interact with assemblies in the software. So now we're going to open up that specific pedal part and kind of show you uh, how you can, you know, go into the layers of your parts. Uh, so basically how this part was built was first they made a shaft and then on that they added the square rectangular pedal 
and then they added rounding to the edges of the petal. So that's how you get that part that you see in the end. And you can also, you know, play with these parts and open them as you're working on the assembly and they'll change in real time in the assembly. So now you see the Da Vinci flying machine. So this is just a cool file that was included with the training software that, you know, kind of gave an example of a more complex assembly. Uh, but it's pretty similar. As you can see here, you're rotating that lever around and you can see the entire machine moving. So there's a lot of interacting parts here, but it's the same underlying concept of dragging around a part uh, to see how your assembly works. So in terms of building a part, the main function that you're gonna be using to create some of your basic 3D shapes are extrude. Uh, so basically you're gonna start off with a 2D sketch and just extrude it in one uh, plane. So basically, you know, if you make a circle and extrude it, it becomes a cylinder. So it, you know, extrudes in one direction. So that's going to be your main function that you're using for robotics modeling. But you can also delve into different functions like revolve, which is, as you can see, it's taking the same sketch as the extrude above it, except it's revolving it around a point, And that's the 3D object that you get. And there are other functions like sweep and blend, which you probably won't use as much, but it's nice to know that they're there. That they're there. So in assemblies, you're going to have a lot of types of constraints. But to give you a basic overview, uh, there are two basic types of constraints, static constraints and kinematic constraints. So static joints are basically when two parts are fixed in relationship to each other. So if you have a part welded on your robot or screwed stationary on your robot, that's going to be a static joint. So basically, it just doesn't move. Uh, and kinematic joints are basically when, you know, a part moves in relationship to another part. So the two main types of kinematic joints that you'll be using, as you see on that kinematic constraint section, are the pin and slider joints. So pin joints will be more for like wheels and rotating a piece around an axis of another part. And slider joints will be for, you know, linear slides and things like that. So here's another example of how you can kind of you know, set up relationships in PTC. So as you can see, we're gonna open this gear assembly. So to start out, these gears are basically all put on these axles in a channel, uh, but as you're gonna see in a moment, they're not actually related to each other yet. They haven't been, you know, set up as a real gear system. They're moving individually. So what you really want is, you know, when one of these gears or wheels move to have the other gears move in, you know, in the right way according to their gear ratios. So we're gonna skip a little bit ahead here and jump to how the relationship in the gears are set up. So as you can see, how uh, this is being set up is you go into applications uh, and then you go into mechanisms and set up, uh, you know, click on gears. And basically you can start by choosing your first gear uh, and setting its number of teeth and then going into your second gear and setting its number of teeth. And, you know, once you apply that relationship, they will move in relationship to each other based on the gear ratio. So as you can see, we just did the first set of gears and now uh, currently we're doing the second set of gear. So the middle gear is 120 teeth and the gear on the right behind the wheel is 80 teeth. So once you set up that gear ratio and you rotate these wheels and gears, they'll move how they would in real life, basically. So to move on, uh, this is an example of an analysis that we did when we were building our robot last year. So at one phase of our design, uh, we basically had sprocket based wheels that would have certain grooves. As you can see, uh, each of those wheels have specific grooves that would be made uh, in a way that would kind of move along the churros on the ramp as though a sprocket would you know, move across a chain. So uh, as you can see, these uh, grooves basically smoothly move over the churros and the you know with PTC we were able to accomplish this by kind of testing out different uh, angles of offset between each of those wheels and also figuring out the size required for each of those grooves for this to you know function properly. Uh, in the end of the season we didn't actually end up going with this design uh, because you know it, while it was a good idea uh, we found a simpler design of just a four-wheel drivetrain but this just gives it a great uh, example of you know, instead of wasting time with trial and error and aluminum or, you know, plastic, you can, you can just go straight to PTC and test out these kind of things. 
So PTC is also great for concept design, as we mentioned earlier. So in your training, how to develop a product, uh, there'll be a lot of information about this. But basically, we use this a lot in uh, our robotic seasons. So when you're figuring out how the components of your 18 by 18 by 18 inch robot are going to fit together, it's really nice to kind of, you know, allocate some space for each of your components and to kind of give you a preview of how much space you're working with for each component. So you can set up these kind of, you know, transparent or, you know, however you choose to make them blocks that add up to your, you know, 18 by 18 by 18 robot. And they give you an idea of the space that you're going to allocate for each of your components. So now we're going to show you a concept sketch. So, you know, you can also do these kinds of uh, concept designs with just simple sketches without making 3D models. And as you can see here, we set up a sketch of a robot with a bucket attached to an arm. And we set up some dimensions that we were testing out. And with these dimensions, we could see how the bucket and the arm moved in relation to the, you know, robot. So even with simple sketches like this that take basically seconds to set up, uh, you know, you can get a lot of information out of PTC. So, you know, the other great thing about PTC is that they provide you with the field uh, set of parts, as we mentioned earlier, and you can get these basic concept models and put them on the field and test out basic things like this, like how, you know, our bucket would reach the goal on last year's field. And as you can see, our model actually has square wheels instead of round wheels. And this is great because if you have square wheels, it just kind of allows you to orient the robot very smoothly on different field elements without, you know, dealing with the you know, roundness of the wheels. So as you can see over here, we're basically doing another type of analysis. So, you know, we have a concept design of, you know, basically the basic shape of our robot, uh, a rectangular prism uh, on wheels. And this is models the incline that our ramp was on last year. Uh, so basically, we're just going to test gravity and see how you know, this robot would hold up on the ramp. And obviously, it didn't hold up very well. Uh, it tipped over. But, you know, instead of investing time into building these prototypes in real life, you can just simply do an analysis like this in PTC. So on the same page that we showed you earlier, if you just scroll to the bottom, you're going to see all the uh, parts that we were talking about, the Tetrix complete set of parts and also the uh, field parts and the field elements. So right now, uh, I'm going to show you uh, animation from our first year. So as you can see, you can make these animations look really nice. Uh, this is basically just our 3D model of our entire robot that we had at the end of the season by Worlds. And it just gives an overview of the robot and some of the basic components and, you know, how they move. And not only does this show the functionality of your robot, but it kind of shows, you know, the judges, for example, if you showed this in the judging presentation, the extent to which, you know, you made your model and, you know, kind of made it nice. So another great feature of PTC is 3D printing. Uh, you know, you can do this with a lot of CAD softwares, but you know, it's really do easy to do with PTC. Uh, we did this with our sprocket wheels, for example. And another great way to use 3D printing is with USB relief parts. So as you can see in those pictures, they're just small little parts that you can design specific to your robot that'll hold USB connection secure. So if you want more tutorials uh, and you know you want to get familiar with different softwares that PTC offers, you can go to this website, which is called learningexchange.ptc.com. So to end this off, we just want to give a big thank you to PTC. They've been a great sponsor throughout the years, and their software has given us a lot of utility in our design throughout you know all three of our seasons. So it's a really great software, and we want to thank them and also you for checking out this video. If you want more tutorials uh, similar to this one and more information, you can go to our website or our social media.